So hello all. Uh, so we'll continue our discussion with respect to Python data structures and in this particular session we'll be discussing about Boolean variables, Boolean and logical operators, list, comparison operator, dictionary, tuples and sets. Remember guys, list, dictionary, sets all play a very very important role uh, when we are actually doing exploratory data analysis because remember that in machine learning algorithms we'll be rereading different types of data from various data sources and once we read the data sources we need to perform various statistical analysis to understand or get more insights of that particular data so because of that we need we should know how to operate with different data structures like list dictionaries tuples sets different types of boolean variable and different types of boolean and logical operations that we usually perform so in order to understand boolean variables i have also given a description about it over here boolean variables are two constant objects false and true they are used to represent truth other values can also be considered false or true okay so usually in order to create a boolean variable we basically use a function which is called as bool okay so bool function i hope you 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 are familiar with boolean variables in other programming languages also right so here by with the help of this boolean function you can basically create a boolean variable in short otherwise there are two inbuilt function one is true and one is false okay uh, after this i'll also show you different types of logical operations also but instead whenever you are working with boolean variable that basically means your output is either true or false so I have printed over here true and false. If I see the type of this true, you can see that it is basically a boolean. If you see the type of false, it is basically a boolean. Now, let me consider this, how we can apply different types of inbuilt function. Um, if I, if I, if, now we have already discussed about strings, right? And in strings, there are a lot of inbuilt functions. So let, let me just show you, okay? I've created a string called as um, Krishnai, that is my name. I'm just going to create a cell below this and as soon as I execute this okay and if I write my underscore str dot tab if I press tab you can see that I'm having all the different different inbuilt functions okay there are a lot of inbuilt functions inside string they are inbuilt functions that are basically present inside list you know or sets dictionary different different inbuilt functions which we'll be discussing and guys remember you need not remember everything always google is there you just have to go and search in google like how you can basically you, you should just have the mechanism to write the right keywords in google you'll be getting all the answers so it is don't take that much headache to learn all the input function just keep an idea about it so let us just discuss over here so i'm taking up this string variable and i'm basically using different different types of boolean function so over here you can see that the first boolean function is basically is alphanumeric okay and this is basically is alphabet is digit is title is sub uh, super is lower okay is space ends with d starts with x now let me just show you uh, what i basically mean to say instead of writing krishna x okay i'll write hello world or just let me write uh, krishna x and i'll just say that okay if it ends with k and it starts with k okay here you, you can see that my 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 name actually starts with k and ends with k so let us see how we can basically apply different, different uh inbuilt functions okay so i'll just write my underscore str dot is alphanumeric okay now if you want to see what this function does you just press shift tab okay it is basically a boolean function it returns true if all the characters in s are alphanumeric okay that basically means a combination of alphabet and numeric so if i just execute this you can see that it is false why it is false because i just have a normal string i don't have any numbers right i don't have any numeric value now let me just show you one more way after this this alphanumeric right so if i, if I write something like this one if i write something like this one two three here you can see as soon as i write one two three right it is being identified as a numeric value okay so it is basically giving me true it is the combination of both alphabet and num numbers okay uh after this you still have different different inbuilt functions like is alphabet is digit is title this title says that if a string contains a title words 
what does this title word basically indicate okay let me just execute this let me just execute it separately over here and show it to you it is showing me true the reason it is showing me true because it has a title word what does the title word basically means that whatever word you have if the first character is in the title case right that is basically capital case okay at that time it is basically called as a title word so here you can basically see true similarly you can also apply different different inbuilt functions the most two important will be this one see it it ends with k and starts with k this and this is basically case sensitive guys if i am writing small k it will check for small k if i am writing capital k it will check for capital k obviously in this case it does not end with k right so because of that what it will give me it will give us false so let me just take this you can see that over here down i am seeing that it is alphanumeric it has given me true it is alphabet yes it is alphabet but all the all the words in that particular string all the characters in that particular string is not alphabet so it is false is digit it is false because i don't have any integer values or digit values uh is title yes it is true and you can see that this also it starts with k it is basically giving us true so this is a lot of inbuilt functions are again present guys so if you want to see the output like if if any inbuilt function gives you an output like true or false it is basically a boolean function or it may be a boolean variable and all okay now let us see and try to understand what are the different types of logical operation that i can basically do with respect to boolean and i hope everybody is familiar with different types of uh, logical symbols operators like and or right you know that when in and right and i probably think you may have learned this in your engineering days right you have basically played with logic gates over there when you have and so suppose you have true and true it is basically giving you true if you have true and false it is basically giving you false if, if it is true or false it is giving basically giving you true and for the or operation both the value should be false then only it will give you false otherwise it will basically give you true so these are some of the things that i have basically showed it to you and different types of logical operators also still if you want to have a very complex logical operation suppose i take this two example suppose my string underscore example is hello world and my underscore str is crush okay if i i've basically used this operation my str dot is alpha can anybody tell me what it will be yes it will definitely be true guys because over here you can see that i only have alphabetical uh, alphabets inside this particular word and suppose i also say that whether my string underscore example is num so this will basically give me false because this is not numeric right it, it is basically string but this is true and this is false so when i am applying a logical operation like or it will basically give me true because one of the values true over here and that is what an or get basically says so once i execute this okay sorry i cannot execute the top one so let me execute this and finally i get a true value okay so this was some of the boolean logical operations again you can basically use different types of complex operations again this is just starting guys as i go ahead and do different types of exploratory data analysis i will again be visiting all these things just to have a idea for you to practice python for the people who are basically new in python you can just see all this stuff again all this material will also be provided in the github now the next thing that we are going to discuss is list list is one of the most important data structures that we usually use in python so list is a very important data structures we usually use in python and uh, over here the definition is that list is a data structure in python that is mutable changeable ordered a sequence of elements each element or value that is inside a list is called as an item so list is basically a collection of different items just as strings are defined as character between the quotes list are defined by using values inside the square brackets so let us just see what is list exactly so you know how to see the type data type so i have like this if i execute it this is basically my list okay so that basically means anything that you define inside a square braces it is basically your list and you should remember that okay now as i said that list is mutable it is changeable and it can contain any elements inside it okay so let me just define it over here i have created a variable which is an empty list if i see the type of list of an example it is basically showing me list data type one more way of creating an empty list is basically by using an inbuilt function which is called as list okay and if i write type of list this is my list okay and inside the list element if i want to manually add it i just have to use comma separated values okay inside this list comma separated values so i have mathematics i have written over here i have written chemistry 100 200 300 200 and 4 again it need not be of the same data type it can be of different data type so once i execute this 
and if i see this this is basically my type of list now if i also apply some length function there is again an inbuilt function inside uh, python if i write length of list it is basically showing me six because they are six items i basically have six items inside this you can count it and length basically does that only okay now this is the way how you can basically create a list there are various ways again uh, either you can hard code it either you can use this inbuilt function and then you can basically append to it now let us go and see some of the inbuilt function inside list one of the inbuilt function i'm going to use is something called as append append helps you to add more items inside the list so here if you want to see the definition just go over here and press shift tab okay so this is nothing but it appends an object at the end of the list and it should be okay? so once i execute this you can see over here and if i go and see you can see that my crush is getting, getting added at the last but you may also have a scenario that you want to append in uh, you know some different order you can you can basically append in zeroth index or first index or second but before that before that guys uh, i also want to show you that how an indexing is basically done in list so indexing in list okay so in order to do the indexing what i'll do is that i can write suppose i want to uh, get the 100 element Remember indexes usually start from zero. So mathematics is in zero, chemistry is in one, two. Okay. So if I write list of two, this is basically giving me hundred. Okay. Similarly, if I write list of three, this is basically giving me two hundred. List of four will give me two two zero four, and finally list of five will give me crash. Okay. I think it is list of five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, list of five is two zero four. Uh, list of six is crash. So let me just go and see. What is the list of six? And this is basically how an indexing is done. Apart from this, indexing can also be done with the range of values. Okay. Now let me just show you. Suppose I want the elements. I want to pick up the elements from chemistry till the end. Okay. Suppose I I want to pick up all the elements. I'll write list of colon. Just see. Okay. If I give colon, it is basically going to pick up all the elements. Now remember, there is one left. Uh, empty position in uh, before this colon and one right as an empty position i have not specified anything so by default it is taking from zero to index till the last now suppose i want from this chemistry till the end of this particular list so i'll just give the index of chemistry so over here i've given it as one and i'll just write colon and i'll not give anything in the right hand side so once i execute this you can see that from chemistry i'm getting all the elements okay all the elements till the element of crush okay now suppose i just want some range of values from chemistry till 204 so what you have to do is that first of all understand which is the index of chemistry over here i know chemistry index is one and chris index over here i can see one it is one two three four five six always remember whatever end i am basically giving right before that particular element the, all the elements will be picked up. So if I have given 6 over here till 204, everything will be picked up. That basically means that 6, the, 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 the index that I am giving of crash is basically the last index and before that all the elements will be picked up with respect to this particular list value what I am using. And this is basically called as indexing techniques. Okay, There are various indexing techniques which I will be using for retrieving the values. Okay, And here you can see that I don't have any crash. Now after that, uh, there are still different ways of indexing, which I'll be still discussing in NumPy arrays and in pandas. Uh, so let us go ahead and try to understand what this insert function does. Now understand guys, whenever I was actually appending, okay. And one more thing I missed out is that when I'm appending some list values, right. Suppose I say that list dot append and inside this I give elements like, uh, uh, suppose let me just write John okay and uh, suppose i write bala right so as soon as i execute this and if i go and see this list and again guys over here you can see that i'm appending two elements okay i'm appending two elements so when i'm doing this and if i go and see list this actually creates a nested list okay you can see that it is getting added like a, another list inside it which is in short creating as a nested list so always remember that in this way Suppose you want to separate it into different different values. I'll just show you. There is another inbuilt function which is called as exchange. Okay? That we are. I'm going to show you in, show, in 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 a while. Now I also 
want a situation that I want to add elements on some specific index. Suppose I want to add element on first index, on second index, not on the last. Append by default adds all the element at the end of the particular list. Okay, So for that, I have an insert function. Now insert function, the first parameter is basically your index. The second parameter is basically the value or the value that you're going to insert inside the uh, list itself. So I have given, suppose I have given uh, second index in the second index I want to insert the element Nayak and once I execute it and if I go and see the list you can see that in my second index Nayak has been added okay and uh, similarly you can add at any index whatever you want now uh, again when I do this list dot append of hello world and if I go and see the list you can see again it is created a nested I have an another inbuilt function which is called as extend okay? now for extend what I will do is that let me just show you suppose uh, let me just once again uh, let me just create a fresh list because that list had actually become a bigger one and I can put up any element that I want so once I execute it and suppose I write list dot extend if you see what is the definition of that and always remember guys try to see the definition of the function that we are using and here we can basically see that we have this particular definition which is basically saying that extend list by appending elements uh, from the table right so all this information is basically given over here you just have to use it and suppose I give multiple elements over here suppose I give like 8 comma 9 okay uh, 8 comma 9 now here you can see that I'm adding multiple values inside the list okay? it's not just a single value in the append way when I try to add it what had happened actually I had actually seen that it was getting added as a nested list but in this case if I go and add it and if I go and see my list again if I go and see my list again this is basically getting added as a separate element you can see separate element inside it it is not just creating an extended uh, multi nested list now, there are various operations that we can basically perform on list both there are some inbuilt function present in Python there are some uh, you know inbuilt function present in list itself and that we are basically going to discuss so first of the operation suppose I have written list is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 and creating an in I'm using an inbuilt function which is sum what it does is that it tries to find it adds all the numbers inside this list and it will give us the output and similarly I have inbuilt function like pop pop basically means that it will try to pick up the element uh, from a specific index okay by default if I don't give any value it will pick up the last it will pick out or it will remove the last element okay and that is how if you remember stacks right if you if you're familiar uh, with stacks in your engineering days it just removes the uh, in stack case it will remove the first element but just understand in this list by default it will pick up this last element okay so once I do this uh, suppose this is my list okay I'm just doing list dot pop so this basically is uh, remove the five uh, the last element that is present inside the list if I go and execute this this is my one two three four and after this uh, when I see list dot pop of zero now suppose I am giving the index this index element should be removed so if I write list dot pop of zero this is basically removing the first element so here it is you can see that the first element has been removed okay and similarly you can again where uh, play with different different things now let us uh, see some inbuilt functions inside list uh, so there is a function called as count and if you want to go and see what does this count does it basically calculates the total occurrences of a given element of a list suppose if I say I have defined a list like 1 1 2 3 4 5 and if I am saying list of dot of count of 1 then if I execute it it is basically giving me the output as 2 in short it is saying that there are two elements present of this particular value you can also apply length of list and one more thing suppose this length this there is one more inbuilt function which is called as index index basically says that returns the index of the first occurrence okay and start and end index are not necessary parameters so over here you can see that if I go and press shift tab I just have to give the value okay suppose if I give the value inside this particular list and I tell them to find out okay what is the element that is present uh, you know in that particular index so basically when uh, from this particular list where is one present at which index it is present so the first occurrences of the index will basically be capped. but one thing that you notice that there is also a variable called as start and stop I know in my zeroth index I have one so let me just say that okay my start index test uh, check that particular element from the first index 
till the fourth index. If I execute it, you can see that the this particular one is actually found out on the first index. I have not given the first element, right? The zeroth index. Instead, I am saying that search from the first index. So we are getting this particular value at the first index. I hope you understood it and remember guys here we are actually providing the values we are not providing index but over here we are providing the indexes from where it should be searched similarly there are inbuilt functions like min of list and max of list okay so this will actually help us to find out the minimum element in the list and maximum element in the list in short the most important thing that you will be noticing over here is some methods like uh, how you are basically using indexing in the list okay Apart from that how insert statement is basically used how how extend method is basically used and how you can basically perform different different operations now some of the operations that i would like to specify suppose this is my list if i say lst multiplied by 2 this in short what we are doing you will be considering you will be thinking that all the elements will be multiplied by 2 but it will not happen in, in that way the whole list will get appended again if you say multiplied by 5 that basically means 5 times it will get appended okay so that is the major thing over here okay so you should also know some of the operations that are actually done over here again this is all very much very very much necessary in exploratory data analysis so this was about the list in my next video we'll be discussing about sets i'll be discussing about dictionaries i'll be discussing about uh, nested dictionary tuples and other things okay I hope you like this particular video. I'll continue in the next video itself. Uh, yes, uh, have a great day ahead. Thank you.